Hello and welcome to Hadoop Tutorials at Learning Journal. In the earlier session, we learned some basics of MapReduce programming and the MapReduce execution engine. In this session, we will try to understand the basics of YAN. So, what is YAN? You Google for it and the result is yet another resource negotiator. What does it mean? I talked to several people and got the answer in different ways. Here is a list of some common answers. All of these answers are correct and give a different perspective of YAN. But the last one is the most compelling explanation. Let me explain that. The initial release of Hadoop, I mean Hadoop 1.x, was a system for creating and executing MapReduce applications. We had just two Hadoop components, HDFS and MapReduce execution engine. The HDFS was at the base and it was providing data to MapReduce engine. The MapReduce engine was executing on top of HDFS and it was taking care of everything related to running the MapReduce program. Later, people realized that MapReduce is not enough to solve many of the big data problems. They wanted to take advantage of HDFS and allow other programming models or we can say other execution engines on top of HDFS. That's how the open source community started YAN project. The idea was to take resource management and job scheduling responsibilities away from the old MapReduce engine and give it to a new component. So, YAN is a middle layer between HDFS and MapReduce engine. It is responsible for managing cluster resources. When we say resources, we mean CPU, memory, disk I.O. and network bandwidth. The MapReduce engine is responsible for executing MapReduce programs. YAN provides APIs for requesting and working with Hadoop cluster resources. The MapReduce engine uses API to request all its resource requirements and task scheduling. That's it. You might have already realized that YAN is not a tool for application developers. The YAN APIs doesn't target individual developers. The target audience for YAN APIs are the teams working towards creating a new computation engine. We already have several execution engines that work on top of YAN. Some of the popular ones are Apache Spark, Apache Storm, Solar and Apache Tez. All of these tools offer some distributed computation and they all need a cluster. The ambition of YAN is to bring all kind of distributed computation capabilities into a single cluster. Without something like YAN, we will be forced to create many clusters. Having multiple clusters could be more painful if we have to move or duplicate same data among these clusters. The YAN project aimed to fill that gap and bring everything into a single cluster. You don't see any NoSQL databases like Cassandra in this diagram. They are still not YAN enabled. So, if you want to use Cassandra, you will need another cluster. That's a big cost and pain area for enterprises. There is an incubating Apache project called Slider. Apache Slider is aiming to bring NoSQL databases into a YAN managed Hadoop cluster. It already implements HBase and Accumulo. The slider targets to bring NoSQL databases into Hadoop cluster without a need to change those systems to become YAN enabled. Apache slider has one more critical objective. They want to bring on-demand scale-up and scale-down capabilities to Hadoop cluster. This kind of elasticity is the key offering of cloud providers. I mean, you can launch new applications on demand and scale them up or down without stopping them. Again, we, the developers, are not the primary target audience for the Slider project. Okay, so I guess you got a high-level picture of YAN and Slider. 
Though we are not the primary audience for yarn, it is highly valuable to understand two things about yarn. So, let's look at the first part now and I'll cover second part in a separate session. The yarn is composed of two long running daemons in your cluster. There is one resource manager per cluster. So, in our Hadoop cluster, we have one resource manager. It's a master service and usually deployed in high availability configuration. The high availability configuration for resource manager is similar to name node high availability configuration. So, in your production cluster, you may have one active resource manager and a standby resource manager. If active resource manager goes down, the standby will take over the role of an active resource manager. There is one node manager for each node in your cluster. The node manager is a slave service and it is responsible for launching and monitoring containers. A container is a Linux control group. A Linux control group is a Linux kernel feature that allows us to allocate CPU, memory, disk I.O. and network bandwidth to a user process. That means a container is a user process with some resource limitations. Okay, so with these two yarn demons on the cluster, let's understand how the yarn allocates resources for a job. When we submit an application to yarn, the request goes to resource manager. The resource manager will find one node manager and ask it to launch one container. It is the first container of an application and we call it the application master. This application master takes over the responsibility for executing and monitoring the job. The application master's functionality depends upon the application framework. A MapReduce application master functions differently than a Spark application master. If it is a MapReduce application, the application master will request the resource manager for more containers so it can start map and reduce tasks on those containers. Once the containers are allocated, the application master reaches out to node managers to launch the containers and execute the task. The task directly reports back its status and progress to the application master. Once all the tasks are complete, all the containers including application master will perform necessary cleanup and terminate. Great, so I think by now you have a good idea of all three core components of Apache Hadoop. HDFS, MapReduce Framework and YAN. I hope you understand the trend that where they are heading. So, YAN is not a component where we need to focus much because we, the developers, are not the target audience for YARN. The usage of MapReduce framework is declining. I don't see a long-term future of MapReduce. So we don't focus much on MapReduce framework as well. The HDFS is a storage layer. It's pretty powerful and going to stay. So we need to focus enough on HDFS and understand its key features and capabilities. There are many powerful features of HDFS that we haven't explored yet. So, in the following videos, we will again return to some critical HDFS features. Thank you for watching Learning Journal. Please subscribe to learn more and don't miss any video. Keep learning and keep growing.